important role. So we have these beautiful stories that mirror each other. Old and New Testament, Moses and Jesus. Now I will show you Moses and Jesus. Thanks. So you can see, yes, for sure. Right. So, <laughs> you can see because from the baptization of Jesus, you know, here they have the different temptation of the devil. We have actually has uh, Jesus nominated uh, some Peter and, and some Andrew, his own followers. And here he actually was preaching and here he, held, uh, he healed a guy that was very sick. Here we have the ideal city. You, look how beautiful is the architecture. You know, the, the pavement drives your eyes to the basilica. So the, it's an ideal basilica, and we call this picture the ideal city. Suddenly, architecture played a symbolic role. And in fact, here we have Jesus that is giving the key of paradise to St. Peter. That's why the key are the symbol of the papacy, because they are the key of paradise and of Rome, the eternal city. That's the idea. Here you have a last supper, but the only person sitting on your side is Judah. So that's why he's very black. And you have to be very careful because he has bad companies. You cannot see here on the, in the copy, but on the original, yes, on the right shoulder, he has a small double. That, of course, is not advising him very well. Look at the details, how beautiful. You have cats, dogs, you have different, you know, cats. So it's very well detailed, very well done, actually, everything. These are popes, and these are also the original decoration, different popes. You know, Sixus IV wanted to show you that he had a long, long story. So let's uh, change the act. This is watching at the altar on the left, and this is Moses. Moses actually wanted to leave Egypt, but an angel stopped him. Why? Because he had to lead his own people, the Jewish people. So what happened, he had to make also different proof, as you see here, until he didn't saw God from the burning bushes. And then he led his own people saved, so that's him, and the waters open up of the Red Sea to let him go, and then they close on the Egyptian army, and that's what they are doing, they are dying actually. <laughs> Here, look, uh, we have uh, Moses, that is uh, taking the Ten Commandments from God. He is actually coming back, but they are worshipping the golden cow, so he is a little bit hungry. And here he is punishing the rebels, but God helps him and he is opening the earth and swallowing the rebels down. Here you have actually when he is nominating the successor, and here he lies dead. Our exit is here, <laughs> Moses' side. Okay, on the exit without. It's just that you know, you know, there are two exits, so maybe I don't know. There is a moment you faint. You really you want to get out. <laughs> uh, then remember Moses, not Jesus. Moses, only Moses. <laughs> and 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 after you get out, there is more air because it is uh, the steps, and you just wait for us. <laughs> and here you have the original scene, you know, how they pick up uh, the fruit of knowledge and for that reason it was forbidden, they were ch chased away from Eden. And here the next tree is Noah, Noah's story. Has he saved the humanity with the arch? Has he sacrificed thanking God for having saved the humanity? And the last one is laying drunken and uh, the children are laughing at him. So you might wonder why such a cycle ends up with a drunk person. Uh, 
probably because he saved humanity, but we were now saved. We needed Jesus. So the idea is that we had to watch out, you know, because we can still uh, fail. That's the idea. So. In Michelangelo that was called again by Paul II, you know, this nice educated guy that decided that art was his weapon. And he told him, you know, I need to... And Mikey was in the middle of his sixties. Say, no way, now forget it. And Paul said, Mikey, just here, I'm gonna pay, because he was a very, you know, diplomatic, good guy, so he knew how to convince people. I said, listen to me, I'm gonna pay for any material you are going to choose for the 16th chapel. Doesn't matter how much, doesn't matter what, I will pay for all of them. <laughs> My clan could not believe it. He started laughing and say, okay, then I want for the whole world. Lapis is a stone, is a blue stone that is more, at the time, was more worth than gold. It's blue. He wanted practically to open the 16th chapter and to erase the wall. And Paul III said, okay, you got it. And the poor Michelangelo had to paint the last judgment. And that's what he did. Look, what the hell. Yeah. He did a nice job. It took him five years. To finish. And what he did, he did a Jesus in the middle that nobody ever saw before and after, I would say. So full of muscles, it's like a gland here. You know, he is very strong. He's lifting the people on one side and sending the other on the other side to hell. So people here are angels. And they are playing trumpets and they are waking the dead body up. These are the chosen ones, so they take the body and they go up, where all the saints are. Between the saints, we can, you know, recognize them because of the different elements. We have St. Peter with the key and St. Bartholomew. Bartholomew has a knife because he was unskinned for his own faith. So he has also his own skin. But guess what? This is a portrait of Michelangelo himself. He wanted to say the, to the Pope, look what you have done to me. I'm just an empty skin now. You know, imagine in the middle of his 60s for five years to paint this, it was his. But as you see, there is no frame. Everything is free, is rotating, is just in front of you like it was real. And on the other side, you have them people, very worried. They are going down to hell. But in hell, you have Karen. Karen was the guy, you know, driving the people with his boat to the hell. And then you have Minos. Minos is supposed to be the lord of hell. But look, he has donkey ears, like an ignorant person, you know, donkey person, and a snake that is biting out a very sensible part, the penis. <laughs> Imagine Michelangelo did a portrait of a guy, a cardinal, that dared to criticize him for the naked body inside the 16th chapter. So he revenged it somehow. Thank you. 